guys, in today's video, the Bruiser's Backyard, we're gonna turn in number one recycling, PET, plastic bottles, recycling to its finest. We're gonna turn the bottles into anything we want. Oh my goodness, look at this, colored filament. We got green from Mountain Dew. We got clear from Coca-Cola. Anything we want out of the 3D printer by using this bottle, converting it into different filaments. We'll show you how to do it in today's video. Let's go! without destroying any 3D printer. No circuit boards, no Arduino chips, no hot ends, just the basics. We're gonna use mechanical power here. You too can build something out of basic junk that you might already have in your garage, in your workshop, whatever, and be able to um, create a 3D printer filament maker. Pull trusion device. So the first thing I did is I got a hot glue gun. I found this piece of junk here with a low high setting so that I can make it a little bit hot. Basically took off the screws, unattached it, and got this set up right here. So basically I, uh, I marked the hot end for the more voltage. I put down a couple of screws into a uh, scrap piece of wood here just to keep it off of the wood and then I screwed into it. Now this might be the most difficult part is getting a screw and then putting a, a 1 16th, a 1 16th drill bit which is 1.6 millimeters which is just about. So you could always make it bigger so I started off at 1 16th and then if it doesn't come out the diameter that you want then you can increase it. But basically took that screw which is almost a 5 16th inch screw. It's a pretty thick screw. Basically inside of here it's no bigger really than that screw size right there. Drill a 16th inch through it and then fatten it up on the other end with a stepper bit like this so that it kind of slowly guides it in. So that it's completely open on that side, it's almost down to the threads, um, and leaving about a quarter inch of just the 1 16th inch bit. You send this through here, this side, and then from the guide hold that you made on that side, you put the stepper bit in, and then I actually put in a Dremel bit just to smooth off the edges of the stepper. So here's another one but this is a lot longer than what I have in there now. So you put a 1 16th through that side, open it up on the other side so that you can lace the filament through. I also made this paper clip, bend it over, get the largest paper clip you could find, um, as long as it'll fit through, then bent it over, and then, and then you have to sand it down. So I put this in the drill bit, grabbed a hold of a piece of sandpaper, drilled it around to make it as thin as possible so that it would actually fit through on this side, because you need this to lace the bottle through. So on this side here, fits all the way through. Just put two nails in there to keep the ribbon going through at the same height. Catch it right there, guide it through on this end here, and pull it through like so. On this I had a 3D printed STL files, and then went to the hardware store and got some, uh, I think 5 16th inch threaded rods. Put some washers on it so it doesn't come loose. As a lead, I screwed a zip tie into the main spool. I also just put a little bit of uh, aluminum foil over top of my hot glue gun just to maintain the heat a little bit. Over here I have a straight razor blade coming from a box cutter type of thing. Um, but I have to I use some washers. And as you can see, I have some other little filler washers in here that are actually smaller because the ribbon was getting too thick. It was breaking when it was coming out of the hot glue gun. So right here, I put it, I took off one of the thick washers, put in a thin washer, compressed it again. You know, uh, keeping that blade right at the exit there, making sure, backing it up, that it's coming through nice and strong. And there's not a whole lot of room in between those washers, so it keeps the bottle nice and straight as it comes down and it's pooling. So uh, basically the washers could go together and then I just take a, a flathead screwdriver head and I kind of just wiggle it back and forth to create that separation in between the washers so that I just have um, just enough for smooth clearance, but it keeps it perfectly aligned. It keeps it straight up and down as the bottle goes through creating the ribbon which then becomes the filament. So I use my conversion chart right here. It tells me the thickness of the bottle and then tells me how thick the ribbon needs to be. So you can make one of these charts yourself. 
So basically for every uh, 0.05 millimeter thickness, you go up one millimeter of ribbon. So let's talk about the filament bottles, the PET number one recycling plastic. I found that the two liter bottles of, of soda were just the right thickness. If the plastic is too thick, you would have to decrease your washers over here to make a thinner ribbon. But the soda bottles are pretty consistent between Coca-Cola and all the off brands. I like the two liter bottles of soda and for this type of system that is not adjustable easy, pretty much just use all the same stuff if you can find, you know, if you have one type of bottle that you can get a hold of regularly, then just use that. I like to pump these up so that I can make the most out of it, get all of these bumps out of the bottom of the soda bottle. So I took on a standard Schrader valve from a bike tire, uh, got them on Amazon, cut a hole in the top of the plastic bottle, pop that through, um, and then put it on top of the soda bottle. And now I'm gonna pump it up 20 pounds of pressure here. Got my trusty bike pump. Put that on there like that. So trying to get to that 20 pound of pressure. Boom, 20 it is. And you can actually hear the sound. I'm gonna put it into a screw gun. And then I get the heat gun going. I got the bottle going like this. As you can see the bumps on the bottom of the bottle. I keep the label on because the heat will actually help release the glue and I don't get any of the, uh, the label actually sticking to the bottle at the end there. Or I get at least as much glue as possible off of the label. As you can see, it's loosening up all those bumps in the bottom of the bottle there. Now heating up that label. And any type of ripple or uh, markings that they indent into the bottle will also come out because the pressure is consistent or the inside of the bottle then allows it to make a nice tubular shape as it's heated. So as you can see, it's already peeling up. The glue comes off nice and easy for easy removal. You see the two bottles. So there's the difference there after heating. Took out all the bumps, took out that ridge right here. No ridge, keeps it smooth, consistent, and uniform throughout. Now, it's time to get off that glue. The label left a little glue. Here's what I like to use, dissolve it, citrus solution. Spray one time on there. That'll work out all of that glue right off there. Just take a paper towel and just wipe it off. No more glue. Use it like this here. Once the glue is off, I like to make a straight line so that I know exactly where to cut on this end. So as soon as it starts to bend, that's kind of where you have to stop because usually this side goes all the way up to about here before the ribbon breaks when you're uh, stripping it. So I tried to do the same on this side. So right as the, as the bend happens, uh, that's where I'm going to mark. And that helps me get a straight line. Release the pressure. Take the X-Acto knife, dig in, just cut that hole up in there, then take a scissors, try to cut directly, try to get right up on that line so that you get a nice flat surface. Go back to the dissolve it, take off the magic marker. Great stuff, plus it has some essential oils in it that will actually kind of make it slick lube it up a little bit so that it goes through the hot glue gun a little bit smoother. Dissolve it also takes off the marker. Next step is to take my scissors and cut a very, very thin ribbon. And once I have about three inches of that thin ribbon, then I start to gradually get thicker and thicker until I'm just under the size of the ribbon that I'm looking for, which is just about nine millimeters. That is the cutting depth of this, right? This is a good stage right now, since you have that open end right here, that if you wanted to color your filament, you could start at the tip, hit the, the go button, and make a thick coating all the way down. And then you could make blue filament, pink filament, red filament, whatever. You could get a book or something like that to put your drill on, to keep it nice and balanced, so that you can uh, uniformly put down some sharpie markers there, run them on the inside. We're gonna do black today. King size sharpie marker right there. We're gonna get lots of that ink down there. Hit go on this thing, start up at the top. 
So you just go back and forth trying to make it uniform. But if you are not going to be coloring it, then it might even be best to go back to the dissolve it rag and go through the inside just to get any residue that might still be there after you washed it, you rinsed it, you dried it properly. Plus it's also adding that essential oil on the inside of the filament that'll help it go through all the blades and heater and everything else. Okay, so here is the secret sauce. We're gonna put this down over top. It goes under the blade, comes through. Now the top part has to be all the way against the blade as well. And then I have to pull it all the way until the blade is hitting the plastic. Okay, if I start too early, it'll pinch, it'll make a weird configuration with the bottle and then it won't go through. So you see there's barely any gap. It's gonna be hitting the bottom of the wood right there. I also have a bunch of washers just for weight. We're gonna put that weight of washers right on the top, keep the pressure on the bottle going down and we're gonna pull it through. Take that ribbon and we're gonna pull it. I'm pulling it slightly down so that it's a little bit lower than the source so that it cuts consistently and it's constantly rubbing against the bottom there. It's keeping it a consistent thickness the whole time. As we look at it from here, I wanna get this all the way over to where I have enough to tie it onto my lead over here. Right here, we have that super thin edge right here. I have my paper clip needle. Take off my insulator there so you can see what's going on. Take the needle, put it through here, put it through my two nails. Have that super thin thread right there. And I just hooked it. And I'll just pinch this together, like so. Feed it through, give it enough time to bake as it goes through. Make sure that it should easily glide out the other end here. As you can see, I got that filament out now. So you can gently pull that through. And then once you get it through, you don't want to damage your needle because that's a pain in the butt to fix. So I make sure I pull that off. Then I take my pliers, I just guide it through. It should slowly be able to pull once you get a, a good rhythm going. Because once it's heating and moving all at the same pace, it goes pretty smooth. To pull it enough to get it to my lead so that I can tie a knot around it on a thick part of the filament so that it won't break when it starts to pull hard. Be surprised at how much pressure this filament can take. Putting it around. Okay, so we got it through. And then I do a double wrap around like a figure eight knot. So I go around, I pinch it so that it bends right there. I go around one time, pinching it close, bending it again, and then feeding it through. And we're pretty much set. I always keep a nail clipper around to clip off any excess and to straighten out. So once I'm done producing a filament, making a quick straight cut on the filament, so that it could be fed into the 3D printer well. Now we are using the drill. The drill, the part that goes in there has a screw on it. So I put a screw that was the size of the 3D printed gear. So I put a screw through it and then I put it into the chuck of the drill here. I always keep it in reverse because that keeps this screw nice and tight inside the gear. Then I just have a little hand clamp down here to dial in just the right speed on the drill because I want to go as slow as possible. You want to get it done, why not faster, right? But it does need a little bit of time to go through the hot glue gun and melt and turn, co coil and get thin so that it can go through and it comes out very, very smooth on the other end then. So you wanna have a drill that has variable speed that you could do and dial in to make it very slow. Right now it's going super slow. And as you can see, each gear goes a little bit slower, slower, slowest until it starts to pull. Right now it's pulling tight starting to take up the slack back here on this bottle. But as you can see, it's coming out super smooth. The screw gun, all I did was take out uh, some screws that were already in there in certain locations. I took out the screws and I put in drywall screws to go all the way through and into. So I did not destroy the drill at all. Your drill's fully functional if I take it out 
remove the chuck, put the screws back in, we're back in business on that drill as well. So now the slack is starting to get taken up back here. Soon start to see the bob will start to move. And I just keep an eye right there on that filament, making sure that it's coming through at the same thickness at all times. So it takes about an hour and a half for each bottle to, to produce the amount of filament. Go all the way down to the won't pull anymore and it'll actually just snap off the top of it. So that first round of bout will be scrapped, but everything after that should be consistent. It should be about 1.7 to 1.75 millimeters of filament coming around. So as the filament is going through, it's actually becoming almost like a shrinky dink. It's baking inside the hot glue gun as it goes through so it becomes harder. You see it bends real easy there, it doesn't bend so much here. So as you can see it gets smaller, harder, and then right at the tip there it starts to coil and become filament. And the oh, there is a slight opening so it almost makes like a C, but as long as it's close to the right thickness, the rest will be made up for on the printer settings. Although it's not completely thick like a normal piece of filament is, it has the opening in the middle you can make up for that by changing the settings on your 3D printer to print a little bit faster, a little bit more filament at a time. So it just coils up right next to each other, almost automatically. I align the lead with the hot glue gun nozzle. So as it comes down, it goes right next to it and then comes back. It'll go all the way down and then start to come back over the top again. So doing our business fully folded over two times. So this right here is black filament, created with a Sharpie marker, king size, put it on there, comes through as black filament on the other end. So the end of the spool happened there, it came through, and then it tries to uncoil right away. You gotta catch it before it gets caught up in these gears because it will crimp the uh, filament and then you won't be able to use those segments that have been crimped and unwind. Then once you get a couple rows going at once, you could just unwind like this until you can get all the way down and get them all up. Just keep going hand over hand to unroll, unroll. So you get this last segment right here. Get your nail clippers, clip it off, boom. Find the smoothest part. Looks like it starts right about there. Clip it off, then wind this segment up here. Once it's wound all up, grab some twisty ties from the supermarket, boom. Twist them up, keep them nice and rolled up. So I hope you enjoyed my video on how to create PET filament for the 3D printer using trash. Just recycling materials, taking it out, turning it from the bottle into ribbon, into filament, colored filament. Hopefully this has inspired you to recycle your own PET into filament and be able to use an unlimited supply of free filament for your 3D printer making things out of garbage. If you got questions, I got answers. Don't forget to smash that like button. If you have a question, leave the comment down below. Until next time, Bruce's Backyard, out.